Last time on Terraria, I used the portal gun and accidentally teleported and trapped myself on an island. The only way I can escape is to defeat Moonlord and use the portal gun to escape the island. And this all began with farming trees, ah! killing slimes, collecting dirt, fishing for ores, and flesh. eventually killing the wall of flesh, entering hard mode. But if I want to escape this island, I require the portal gun, and this all begins with Stage 1. Holy Water, Angel Wings, or Kelkam Anvil. From killing pixies, you can collect pixie dust. With pixie dust, hollow seeds, and bottles of water, you can craft holy water. You see, by using holy water, you can spread the hollowed biome to stone blocks. In order to create an underground hollowed biome, you require 100 hollowed blocks. Once I was finished, I was assaulted by a bug. <laughs> Oh my god, it hurts! No, don't fish it! What are you doing? With my underground hollowed complete, I farmed Souls of Light, and something unbelievable happened. That right there is... Money. Here's the thing. With one crystal shard, you have access to infinite money. But I'll talk about this more shortly, because now that I have Souls of Light, I roped into the sky. To craft angel wings, you require Souls of Flight and feathers. So building a platform, I farmed wyverns and harpies. But, in order to craft angel wings, you require a hard mode anvil, and to craft a hard mode anvil, you need 10 mithril or 12 ore calcum. However, the only way I can acquire hard mode ores is through fishing. So it's time to begin the arduous journey of... Fishing time. There is a 13.89% chance of acquiring Mithril or Urukelkum through Mithril Crates. And with my Master Bait, getting Mithril Crates shouldn't be too difficult. One eternity later. To sum up my hours of fishing, I acquired the Beam Sword, Cobalt Ore from a Pearlwood Crate, was shish kebobbed by a Floating Sword, finally acquired a Mithril Crate, was sneak attacked by a Hollowed Mimic, acquired the Marrow, purchased the Blue Chicken, opened a divine crate and got nothing, opened another divine crate, once again, opened another divine crate and finally acquired Orakelkum. With the Orakelkum, I crafted the Orakelkum anvil, but I required more feathers and became the victim of a wyvern's drive-by. With enough feathers, I crafted the angel wings. While I'm flying, this is the perfect time to like, comment, and subscribe. Stage 1 is complete. Stage 2, Unholy Water, Cursed Flames, Dart Rifle. Stage 2 begins with killing the Eye of Cthulhu. From killing the Eye of Cthulhu, you can acquire Corrupt or Crimson Seeds, depending on the opposite of your world evil. With the Corrupt Seeds, I started a Corrupt Biome, during which I encountered my first regular Mimic. In the meantime, it began to rain, and this was the perfect opportunity to collect Waterleaf, because in order for Waterleaf to be harvested, it has to be raining. With Waterleaf, you can craft crate potions and increase your chances of fishing crates. Because I made a terrible mistake. With the Vile Mushroom, I crafted Vile Powder that allows you to spread the corruption. But to craft an Holy Water, you require bottles, corrupt seeds, Ebon Sand, and by using the Vile Powder, I could turn sand into Ebon Sand. But is that what I did? No. Instead, I used all the Vile Powder on stone blocks. In between these events, I acquired the Daedalus Stormbow, built a new house for storage, acquired the Star Cloak and Philosopher's Stone from Mimics, and was crushed by a golden shower. Hmm. Anyways, because of my ginormous blunder, my brain expanded. And I discovered by using Crimson, Vile, or Purification Powder, you can transform mushrooms. So, waiting for a vile mushroom to grow, I used my crimson powder and created an above-ground crimson. Why did I do this? I don't know, but here's an example of my brain going through this dilemma. The vile mushroom grew. With the mushroom, I crafted vile powder and used it to collect more vile mushrooms. <sighs> Anyways, with the vile mushroom, I... Once the goblin army was defeated, Using the Vile Powder, I acquired Ebon Sand. With the Ebon Sand, I crafted Unholy Water. However, I required more Corrupt Seeds, and this is when I discovered, by creating a Graveyard Biome in Hard Mode, you can buy the opposite World Evil Seeds from the Dryad. In short, I felt a loss within me today. Using my Corrupt Seeds, I built an Above Ground Corruption, and more Unholy Water. With the Unholy Water, I finally created an Underground Corruption. And it only took 6 hours and 0.00068493% of my life. Constructing a mob farm, I easily collected Souls of Night and killed Cleaners for Cursed Flames. 
With the Souls of Night, I can craft Keys of Night. Placing the Key of Night into a chest, I summoned a Corrupt Mimic. Huh? Here's the thing, because my world's evil is Crimson, only Crimson Mimics will spawn. But imagine my surprise when I discovered Crimson Mimics can drop the Dart Pistol. And if it can shoot darts, that's all that matters to me. Now, at this point, you're definitely wondering why I wouldn't just build an underground crimson. Well, as you may already know, the only way to get Cursed Flames is from the Corruption, and with Cursed Flames, you can craft Cursed Darts. By combining the Dart Pistol with Cursed Darts, you can do an insane amount of damage. Stage 2 is complete. Stage 3, Fishing Time. Stage 3 begins with activating a Crate Potion and fishing for Hard Mode Ore to craft better armor. To sum up everything I fished, I acquired adamantite and a heart crystal, the fiberglass fishing rod and increased my fishing power from 22 to 30%, mithril ore, and aura calcum and master bait. With the ores I collected, I crafted the most horrendous armor set ever. As I mentioned before, with the crystal shard, you have access to infinite money. By building a box and hammering a platform, using the crystal shard in the space between the stairs, you can collect crazy amounts of crystal shards. Selling the Crystal Shards, you get infinite money. With my newly acquired fortune, I reforged the Dart Pistol. And after reforging all of my accessories with warding, I have 53 defense with the most horrendous armor set ever. Things were going great, until my computer blue screened and I lost the next 3 hours of footage. So here's an accurate depiction of what happened. I fished in the Corruption and collected Ebonkai for Wrath Potions that increase your damage by 10%, fished in the Crimson for Hemo Piranha to craft Rage Potions that increase your critical strike chance by 10%, located the Snow Biome that I was convinced did not exist and collected 1000 Snow and Ice Blocks, as well as a Heart Crystal. Using the Snow, I built an above ground tundra and farmed ice golems. From the ice golems, I acquired ice cores, a frost feather, and used them to craft the frost helmet and frozen wings. So, in conclusion, I still have the most horrendous armor set ever. Stage 3 is complete. Stage 4 Boss Rush. Crafting rage and wrath potions, I prepared to kill the destroyer. Sleeping until the next night, with the mechanical worm I acquired from my mob farm, I summoned the destroyer. You see, my plan was to use the Skeletron Arena to avoid the destroyer's attack. This, however, did not work. Ah, that's so much damage! So I used the secret ancient technique of running away. Using the goat mount, I easily outran the destroyer, and because the destroyer will follow the player from any distance, with the dart pistol and cursed flames, I did way too much damage. Usually I struggle to beat the destroyer, but that was way too easy. In fact, it was so easy, I did it again. And again. Opening the treasure bags, I acquired enough hollowed bars to craft the hollowed armor, and increased my defense to 67. With my new armor, I was ready to fight the twins. I focused on killing Spasmatism first, with the Goat Skull mount, I avoided Spasmatism's stream of cursed flames, and killed him. Dodging Retinazer's lasers, I beat the twins. Anyways, shortly after killing the twins, a solar eclipse spawned. Once the eclipse was over, it was about time to kill Skeletron Prime. I immediately ran into an issue, the issue being his thick skull. You see, Skeletron will always maintain a distance of between 31.5 and 12.5 tiles above the player and within 6.25 tiles of either side of the player. This means it's impossible to outrun him. With two hearts, I did the very rational thing any player would do. I fell to my death. By jumping off the platform, Skeletron Prime became stuck in an endless loop of trying to reach me. This allowed me to easily damage him, but I quickly reached my Wall of Flesh arena. So strafing to dodge his attacks, if you can't already tell, I was taking this incredibly seriously. Let's not mess up like that again! Ho <laughs> ho! That was almost bad! Anyways, after five minutes of panicking, I killed Skeletron Prime and the jungle grew restless. I just have to say, the Dart Pistol is overpowered and my new favorite weapon. Also, I beat all the mechanical bosses without dying, so that's cool. With my Souls of Might, Sight, and Fright, I crafted the Pickaxe Axe. Stage 4 is complete. Stage 5. Plantera Bulbs, Teleporters, Lizard Power Cells. 
Stage 5 begins with expanding the underground jungle, because in order for Plantera bulbs to spawn, you require a 302 by 302 tile rectangle between each bulb. I also found a life fruit, but to use it, you require full heart crystals, which sadly, I do not have. So to easily spread the jungle, I purchased the Clentaminator and Green Solution from the Steampunker. With Green Solution, you can turn mushroom grass blocks into jungle, and you can buy mushroom grass seeds from the Dryad in the glowing mushroom biome. But, seeing how it still needs to spread, I'll talk about this later. So in the meantime, I expanded the jungle, and built a chlorophyte farm, oh, and swatted the queen bee. It was around this point when I decided it was time to acquire a lizard power cell, however, I needed to build a jungle temple to spawn lizards. In theory, this was easy. In actuality, it was one of the most frustrating experiences of my life. Uh... <clears throat> Anyways, by placing the lizard brick and standing behind the naturally generated lizard brick wall, I finally got a lizard to spawn, and collected a lizard power cell. Throwing adamantite bars into the shimmer, I turned it into adamantite ore to craft an adamantite furnace. Wow, I just said adamantite a lot. Crafting the Star Veil, I expanded the jungle even larger, but a skeleton archer with an aimbot decided to pierce my lungs. I then built my golem arena. At this point, I was beyond confused, because if the skeleton merchant can spawn on a single block in the sky, what are you doing up here? I refuse to believe the glowing mushroom biome still hasn't spread. So I did what anyone would do. I spawn-proof my golem arena, but as you'll see later, it is in fact not spawn-proof. With the glowing mushroom biome ready, I made a terrible mistake. Did you see it? Here, let me slow it down. You see, to create a glowing mushroom biome, you need 100 mushroom grass blocks. By building a house, I removed the mushroom grass blocks and caused it to destroy the glowing mushroom biome. Uh... So I turned my focus to purchasing teleporters. By crafting and throwing dungeon brick walls into shimmer, you can craft cursed dungeon brick walls. Here's the thing though, dungeon mobs can only spawn when there is 250 dungeon brick, and in front of cursed dungeon brick walls at the same time as the player. You'll know it's working once these caffeinated three-year-olds begin to spawn. With the dungeon complete, the mechanic quickly spawned. At the same time, I built a compact house in the glowing mushroom biome. Moving the dryad into the house, I finally purchased mushroom grass seeds. 7,000 should be enough. Placing the seeds, as I mentioned before, by using the green solution on mushroom grass blocks, you can spread the jungle. Oh, also, the traveling merchant finally sold the sitting duck's fishing rod, and I increased my fishing power from 30 to 40%. Anyways, more expansion. All that was left was to wait for the plantera bulbs to spawn, so purchasing teleporters, I had a genius idea to escape the world, creating my own portal fluid. By flipping this switch, the portal fluid will flow into the teleporter, and when I activate this lever, I will teleport to a new world. So without further ado, I activated the switch, and flipped the lever. Uh, I think something went wrong. Welp, that didn't work. Anyways, with the teleporters, I finished building the Golem Arena. Sleeping until a Plantera Bulb spawned, I built my Plantera Arena. With the arena finished, I increased my defense and mana regen. Now that everything was prepared, I buffed and summoned Plantera. To easily dodge Plantera in Stage 1, you can circle around her and avoid her projectiles. Dealing consistent damage with the Dart Pistol, Plantera entered Stage 2. By placing teleporters in each corner of your arena, you can avoid Plantera. Easily killing Plantera, screams echoed from the dungeon. But my potion effect still had 5 minutes remaining. So I immediately summoned Gollum. I say immediately, but in reality, I spent like a minute trying to figure out how to spawn him. No? Oh, that's how you do it! Anyways, in hindsight, this was a terrible idea. Because even though the dart pistol is fantastic, it is really really bad against Gollum. Also, mobs were spawning on the spawn-proof platform and obliterating me. Not to be that guy, but it's not looking good. But after seven minutes of running for my life and mashing the A key, I killed Gollum and it was totally super easy and not difficult or stressful in the slightest. Holy Pachubi, I was so close to death. Hey, we defeated him.
Opening the treasure bag, I acquired the Pixaw, possessed Hatchet, and Beetle Husks. Stage 5 is complete. Stage 6, Sniper Rifle, Chlorophyte, Truffle. Stage 6 begins with farming for the sniper rifle, because sadly, the dart pistol is no longer useful. You see, depending on the mobs you want to spawn in the dungeon, you require specific cursed dungeon brick walls. Placing cursed dungeon slab walls, the first skeleton sniper I killed dropped the sniper rifle, which is insane. I also acquired Glammy the Wisp. With the sniper rifle, I fought the lunatic cultist, without potions, during the day. I think you can see where this is heading. So I collected Chlorophyte from my farm, but I required even more Chlorophyte, so I expanded the farm. Purchasing bullets from the arms dealer, I crafted Chlorophyte bullets. With the Chlorophyte bullets, I was ready to fight the Lunatic Cultist. Killing the Lunatic Cultist, Celestial Creatures invaded the world. Not wasting any time, I was shotgunned in the face. If you want to easily kill the Vortex Pillar, you can farm Alien Queens and let the Alien Larva respawn. Killing the Vortex Pillar, once again, I was shotgunned in the face. Using the Vortex Fragments, I crafted the Vortex Beater. I built another glowing mushroom biome. You see, in order for the truffle to spawn, there must be a surface glowing mushroom biome, purchasing the Auto Hammer. With the Auto Hammer, you can turn Chlorophyte and glowing mushrooms into Shroomite Bars. Using the Shroomite Bars, I crafted the Shroomite Armor and increased my defense from 67 to 83. Stage 6 is complete. Stage 7, Portal Gun. Stage 7 begins with killing the Nebula Pillar and building the Moonlord Arena out of Asphalt. You see, by using Asphalt, it allows the player to run extremely fast. But I'll talk about this shortly because at the moment I just killed the Stardust Pillar. All that is left is to kill the Solar Pillar. Building a tower of blocks and hammering the platforms into stairs facing towards you allows you to kill enemies without being hit. However, this will not stop the worms. Anyways, I killed the Solar Pillar and impending doom is approaching. But this is when I came to an awful realization. Moon Lord is coming and I only have 328 bullets. Moon Lord spawned and as I'm sure you anticipated, I survived a grand total of 19 seconds. But this made me realize my defense is too low. Throwing my Shroomite into the Shimmer and turning it back into Chlorophyte, I crafted the Beetle Armor and increased my defense from 83 to 102 defense. I also crafted the Daybreak. Combining the Pharaoh Claws and Titan Glove, I crafted the Power Glove. With my Souls of Might, Sight, Fright, and my Ranger Emblem, I crafted an Avenger's Emblem and increased my melee damage by 12%. Killing the Crimson Mimic, I acquired the Flesh Knuckles. Combining the Flesh Knuckles with the Power Glove, I crafted the Berserker's Glove, increasing my melee speed and defense by 8. This was also the point I learned something absolutely crazy. After you kill Gollum, the Steampunker will sell the Steampunker wings. Building a house for the nurse, I was ready to fight Moonlord. Thanks to the beetle armor, I was able to tank Moonlord's laser beam without imploding. And with the nurse, I could heal whenever my health dropped too low. Sadly, his tentacle grabbed me and being the panicking two-year-old I am, I died. As it turns out, the Moonlord will grapple you with his tentacle and in order to escape, you have to kill it. Obviously, I did not know this. Anyways, as I mentioned before, Asphalt makes you run extremely fast. Using the Blendomatic from the Steampunker, you can craft Asphalt blocks from stone and slime. With the arena finished, I summoned Moonlord and it was going great, until the Moonlord hit the nurse harder than a truck. So to sum up the next attempt, I built this monstrosity. Why is it a monstrosity? Well, you see, it had this ginormous flaw where it would charge you headfirst into Moon Lord's laser beams. At this point, it was obvious that I needed more health, but the only way I can get heart crystals is from titanium crates. Hmm, this is gonna take a while. 2,000 years later. But I still require four more heart crystals. However, through the force of magic, this heart crystal is actually infinite heart crystals. You see, placing the heart crystals in a chest and saving the game, if you collect the heart crystals from the chest, die from fall damage, and alt F4 right after you die, logging back into the game, you'll have the heart crystals in your inventory, as well as the chest. Voila! Magic. With full heart crystals, I collected life fruits and maxed out my health. 
Throwing the heart crystal into shimmer, I increased my life regeneration. And I got a bunny kite. Anyways, I crafted the Celestial Sigil. With the Celestial Sigil, I summoned Moonlord. My strategy to kill Moonlord was to outrun him with the platform and heal with the nurse whenever I ran by. With my increased defense and max health, it was much easier to avoid his attacks because I didn't have to worry about immediately imploding. Nevertheless, I still came extremely close to dying. But after 12 minutes of flying just outside of his reach, I killed the Moon Lord. Opening the treasure bag, I acquired the portal gun and can finally escape this world. Accidentally teleporting myself to an island, I created a new world and defeated the Moon Lord. This has been the most fun Terraria world I have ever played. Thank you to the members of the channel, King Drago, Jake Lobster, Ungetted Guy, Perplexity, and Santiago Ospina. If you've enjoyed the video, please watch another one, because that's how YouTube knows my videos are good. So click on this one, because that's how YouTube will recommend it to more people. Shooting the portal into space. With Glammy by my side, it's time to travel to a new world.